Not gonna lie, it is more stable. <laughs> I mean, it works. What's up, Airsofters? There's a new PCC in the game, and this one is one you won't wanna miss. This is the Sharps Bros Jack 9 AEG. It's a PCC that's ahead of its competition. Let me explain why after I tell you a little bit about Sharps Bros, the company. Founded by John Sharps in 2012, Sharps Bros started out designing custom AR-15 lower receivers, like this. But today they build full-on rifles. They go to great lengths to make unique looking products with features that are innovative and practical and are all made from start to finish in the US of A. This is the 9mm version of their 5.56 caliber AR, and it looks absolutely badass. You might say it's very... metal. Not just because of the skull, but also this one is full metal. Right now, the Jack is the only one of their designs with a 9mm version, so maybe in the future we'll see uh, the version of the Warthog or the Overthrow, or maybe even the Hellbreaker, but for now, it's the Jack. Named after the famous pirate flag, you might say it's an... AR platform PCC. I'm sorry. The Jack 9 comes in a few different colors and configurations, differing mostly at the stock. First off, I've got to let you know that the threads on the outer barrel here are 16 millimeter positive, meaning that as far as attachments are concerned, you're kind of boned. Now there are a couple adapters available, and the threads are shared with the FNX45, the Marui Mark 23, and a couple other oddball platforms. Now there are two versions of the Jack 9. This one is metal, meaning it's pretty dense at just over five pounds, and the other one has a polymer lower and upper, so it's a little bit lighter weight, and they both have all the same features and internals. The front rail is M-Log on all sides, save for the top, and it's quick detach, much like, much like the Ares M45. I'll demonstrate that now. You pull down on this collar and rotate, and the whole barrel and hop-up unit come right out. And there's a little look at your rotary style hop up as well, which can be adjusted through the dust cover or ejection port here on the side. Let's go ahead and put that back together. Simply press it down, pull down on your locking collar, make sure that it seats, rotate, and it locks back into place. That simple. The upper and lower are a billet style with the lower sporting a hella cool skull for the magazine well. The trigger guard is integrated and uniquely shaped. It has really nice beveled edges to keep from marring up your fingers and it's really comfortable to use. The controls are standard for an M4, but only the select fire switch is ambi. The magazine release is a huge paddle that's impossible to miss and is very easy to reload with either hand. Now, the mag doesn't exactly fall out, and that's kind of a complaint I have, but it's pretty minor considering everything else you get with this package. The trigger is flat, and the hook on the bottom is really comfortable. Now, that brings us to my favorite part of this gun the motor grip. For the longest time, there really weren't a whole lot of options for A2 or M4 AR-15 motor grips. Uh, you either had gas blowback grips, which were just like the real steel versions. Um, they were nice and slim and felt realistic, and you could vary the angle. But when it came to AEGs, you really only had uh, the angle that fit perfectly for motor engagement, and because of the size of motors, you were limited to a thicker profile on the motor grip than was realistic. But with Ares' new pistol grips for their motors, they've gone with a slim motor design, giving you a much slimmer grip for your M4, and because of the shape, they've been able to vary the pinion angle while still maintaining proper engagement, giving you a much more vertical grip surface. And if you're doing a lot of CQB or tight, you know, close quarters combat, that more vertical angle is a lot more comfortable on your wrist as you're engaging players. Moving backward from the motor grip, we have the different stock options. Now this one has a pistol brace, and that's very reminiscent of what you might find or find useful on a real pistol caliber carbine. Um, and while they are very useful on a real PCC, this is airsoft. We don't really need pistol braces, but... Uh, you know, if you like the style, here it is. As well, if you go with the pistol brace, there are multi-positions, or with multiple settings for positions, and because of the design here, you still have a considerable length for a battery compartment. 
This awesome AEG is wired to Dean's, as all things should be, and uh, because of the size uh, of the well, because of the relationship between the battery extension and the actual um, base for the retractable stock, you do have plenty of room for a battery. We found that the 1000 milliamp 11.1 .1 volt batteries worked well. We also found that using one with a Dean's connector already installed on it made fitting everything together in the same battery compartment much easier. Uh, using an adapter with this could prove difficult unless you wanted to go with an even smaller battery. But that would be my suggestion. Go with an 11.1, 1000 milliamp uh, that's already pre-wired to Dean's. One last thing to discuss before we take a look at how this arrives to you in the box is uh, magazines. Now, just about every brand makes a PCC AEG now. And there is no unified magazine between any of the models, save for uh, maybe one or two that use uh, MP5 mags. But suffice it to say, the magazines for the Jack 9 are compatible with the Jack 9. And uh, they feed really well. Uh, my only gripe, as you'll see outside, is filling them with BBs. Let's take a look at how it looks in the box. The Sharps Pro's Jack 9 comes in a box that's not much longer than the gun is fully collapsed. The box itself has a carry handle, so you could use it to transport your gun rather nicely. Inside, there are formed cardboard supports. The gun is bagged for protection, and the magazine is just there. Really, it's not the most robust packaging I've seen. The gun is rock solid and all metal, but I think I'd like to have seen some dense foam rather than just molded cardboard. The inner workings of the Jack 9 are as thoughtfully crafted as the externals. The battery compartment is easily accessed by removing the stock and unscrewing the cap on the buffer tube. The buffer tube unthreads from the back of the receiver to make accessing the quick change spring guide a breeze, which only needs a hex wrench to remove. The slim motor has neodymium magnets and is much thinner than a regular AEG motor, while still having more than enough torque and speed for competitive play, as you'll see in the upcoming range test. The gearbox itself is uniquely shaped to allow for that more vertical grip angle. As you can see, the point where the grip attaches is almost perpendicular to the bore axis. While this is super comfortable, it does mean that this gearbox shell is proprietary. Other proprietary parts include the hop-up and the trigger. The hop-up unit is a two-piece affair. This is necessary because of the way the handguard and barrel detach. The inner barrel itself is a standard AEG brass barrel with very nice crowning. The trigger is uniquely shaped to interface with the micro switch in the EFCS. You can't just throw any old version 2 trigger in here. The rest of the internals are standard version 2 compatible. The 18 to 1 gears ride on a mix of 8mm bearings and bushings, and as you can see, they're absolutely slathered in grease. The sector gear has a magnet in it, allowing the Ares EFCS system to give you your different fire modes via the Ares electronic gear programmer. Check the description of this video for a link to the instructional video on how to use the Ares programmer. The piston has all metal teeth, with the second tooth shaved down, a ported polymer piston head, and no bearing for the spring. The cylinder head is polymer with a single o-ring, and the polymer air nozzle has no o-ring. But it does have enough grease for like, two gearboxes. So there's that. Well, you've joined us once again outside in our outdoor testing facility. I've got the Sharps Bros Jack 9 AEG. Right off the bat, I do want to say, somehow, this is one of the most vertical, vertical pistol grips on the planet. And for an AEG, being able to correctly engage with the gears in the gearbox and still maintaining this really nice CQB grip. I absolutely love for, so for ergonomics, this is already a winner. I also love the multi-position stock, but let's get that set real quick and let off a couple rounds. Another thing I really like about this is because of that EFCS gearbox, the trigger is really uh, nice and snappy. The flat face on it makes it really easy to operate. I also like that there's no slop when it's all the way forward on safe. There's nothing, there's no take up there. I also like how it engages at the back of the trigger stroke, which means you don't have a lot of over travel, which is really, really nice 
Wow, that's really, really nice. Let's talk about some of the other features. Uh, as you can see, I've got ambidextrous controls and they are not vestigial. Uh, so both of them work, great for lefties. Also great for lefties um, is the enlarged magazine release. It is not ambidextrous, uh, but as a lefty doing a mag change, it's really easy to hit with your thumb. So not the end of the world. I actually almost like that instead of having a true ambidextrous mag release because as some of you may know, a true ambi mag release, when you drop it on a plate carrier can sometimes release the magazine and then you're running and you've realized that you've dropped your magazine and then you gotta go back and pick it up and it just ruins your whole day. So I'm glad that they've gone with a single-sided but enlarged mag release. Making adjustments to your hop-up is pretty easy. You've got a functional charging handle and a functioning dummy bolt. And by, by functioning, I mean it actually locks back to allow you to adjust your rotary style hop-up. Once you've adjusted your hop-up, simply use your standard uh, M4 or AR-15 style bolt release and that releases it really easy. Very rewarding and there's no dust cover to worry about here. No dust cover. Moving forward from adjusting our hop up, we've got the QD front end, which we talked about in the studio. Plenty of M-lock space for accessories. We've got the flip up backup iron sights, which are nice and compact. At the front though, I did want to mention that this is 16 millimeter positive threaded. Now there aren't a whole lot of options for you on the market for 16 millimeter positive threaded muzzle devices, but we found this Angel Custom mock suppressor. Not only looks awesome, gives you a little bit more room to put an extended inner barrel if you wanted a little bit more range out of the Jack 9, and the fact that it threads on right out of the package without any sort of modification makes it a really nice upgrade. Let's shoot some more rounds. Distance and accuracy test? I think so. Since we're in the middle of reloading this magazine, I think it is worth noticing, noting, one of my biggest pet peeves about the Jack 9, and that's the magazine. This is the smallest window on an AEG high capacity magazine I've ever used, and it sucks. I need a funnel to get BBs into it. But beside that, it feeds beautifully, and the winding wheel is easy enough to get to, although, once it's close to being fully wound, it does become quite a bit stiff. But enough of that, let's shoot some more. All right, uh, if I didn't mention it before, I've got 0.25 gram BBs and 11.1 .1 volt lithium polymer battery, uh, 1000 milliamp standard buffer tube battery. This is wired to Dean's, so make sure that you're picking a Dean's battery because with the battery and the connector, fitting an adapter inside this tail cap would be very difficult. So make sure you're using a Dean's battery. Even then, you still gotta be a little bit creative with uh, how you're organizing your wires inside the battery compartment. All right, we're out here at 40 feet. I've explained what we've got in the gun, see how accurate we are. We're gonna aim for headshots on this one and uh, see how we do. Let's go check it out. Now at 40 feet, as you can see, it was pretty easy to get all of my shots in the head zone on this smaller target. And where you're gonna be engaging people most of the time with a really short compact gun like the Jack 9, that's awesome accuracy right out of the box. Yes, you could put a longer inner barrel and go to a longer distance, I suppose. Actually, let's head out to 100 feet, see how this does at body shots, come on. All right, first of all, it's a little windy and we're using 0.25, so it's a little wayward side to side, but I mean, that is easy. Let's go see how the target looks. As you can see, in addition to giving him a perfectly symmetrical misses across his shoulders, I was able to nail him in the shoulders and get a good distribution across the entire body. And at 100 feet, with a gun that has an inner barrel that really isn't that terribly long, you've got excellent accuracy, no matter whether you're shooting him at 40 feet or 100 or even past that, which, for something we haven't cleaned the barrel on, we've set the hop up and zeroed the optic, that's awesome. For our FPS test, I've kept the same battery we've been using, that 11.1 .1 volt, 1000 milliamp LiPo battery. I've got 0.20 gram BBs in the magazine, and of course, I've got our X Cortec X3200 set to 0.20s uh, on its sensor. So, let's give it a try. And let's do some full auto.
Not bad for consistency. We're right about 380 to 385 FPS, and with an 11.1, we're looking at about 15 feet, uh, rounds per second. With that said, 380 on a gun that really should be intended for CQB is quite a bit high, but thanks to the quick change spring guide, it's really easy to swap out, and you know you've got enough power to use this outdoors without having to do any changes at all. So an excellent, compact, scalable platform that allows you to collapse it and store it in a smaller contain container, and it's got great performance right out of the box. There are a ton of PCC options coming out on the Airsoft market, and the Jack 9 is arguably one of the more unique and cool looking, but it has so much more going for it than just its looks. The QD front end, the M-Lock rail segments, the multiple versions of stocks that can be attached, the rear wiring, the Deans, uh, the more vertical motor grip, all of those things combined with the added functionality of that EFCS programmable gearbox give you a platform that is not only affordable, but is extremely comfortable to use, has a wonderfully snappy trigger, and can be used in a variety of uh, engagement distances from CQB all the way out to long range outdoors. I think it's a beautiful platform that looks aggressive, has awesome styling and functions very well. And if you're looking into the PCC market, it's certainly worth checking out in a variety of colors that are currently available. Make sure you check out more information at our website for both the full metal and polymer versions right here at evic.com. Or tune into our social media accounts like Facebook and Instagram to find out future updates of other releases of Sharps Bros 9mm designs or how we choose to outfit them in some maybe creative ways that you might find interesting. As always, make sure you're playing safe, playing responsibly, and playing with the respect of others. It's up to us to make sure that Airsoft is fun and an enjoyable sport for people to be part of. Thanks, see you guys later.